At the Alaska Volcano Observatory, scientists can track and detect volcanic activity to see if or when one might erupt. But that wasn't always the case. Back in the day, to track a volcano, you used to have to see it to believe it. And Laurel, that's kind of how Bogoslav was first discovered, right? The first volcanic activity of Bogoslav occurred in the mid-1790s. But the first mention of it came from Captain Cook. In 1778, when he spotted a sail-like rock about 60 miles west of Dutch Harbor. But he and the crew did not know that a 6,000-foot volcano lay beneath that rock, and the crater was hidden just under the sea level. So when did Bogoslav rise up? Early in May 1796, amid thunder, earthquake, and steam, this emerged from the sea in the boiling waters. Well, Otto von Kotzebue heard all about this from an agent of the Russian-American company who was at Unalaska. He and some natives of Umnak and Unalaska had witnessed the cataclysm and seen the island come up. In fact, the witnesses said that for several years after that, that the water around the island was really, really warm and the land was too hot to walk on. So, Bogoslav, what's the story behind the name of this volcano? Well, the native people called it Agashagak, but since it came up out of the water on St. John's Day in the Russian calendar, the Russians named it after Joanna Bogoslava for St. John the Theologian. And since that time, Bogoslav has continued to erupt and change its peaks. Yeah, it sure has. Um, in 1886, 800 foot peak heaved up out of the sea. And then in 1906, another two 400 foot peaks came up, although icy waters kind of washed those guys away. But as late as 1910, violent quakes were still being felt around Dutch Harbor, and they were probably associated with more islands coming up in the Bogoslav group. And Bogoslav still active today, in fact, one of 52 historically active volcanoes in Alaska, in the area more commonly known as the Ring of Fire. Good thing they've got their eyes on it.